In this video, it will talk about the issue that happened in the cabotage policy in Malaysia, which has led to certain economic phenomena and problems. Malaysia's cabotage policy has been implemented in 1980, to maintain and improve the competitiveness of the Malaysian shipping industry. However, it has had an impact on the local economy and runs counter to the idea behind the drive for trade liberalization. International Seafarers Day is observed annually on June 25th by IMO, to raise awareness of the crucial function that seafarers do, and to let people know the importance of seafarers keeping the world commodity circulation invisibly. The problem encountered is the pricing disparity between East and West Malaysia, price inequality caused by other national policies, and the domestic shippers market being monopolized by this Kabatar regime. Research aims and objectives To evaluate cabotage vessel operations in light of the cabotage Act To determine the impact of cabotage policy to maritime Malaysia in the economic aspect To study the derivation problem of Malaysian cabotage policy To evaluate arguments supporting and opposing the continuation of the cabotage policy To learn more about lessons learned from other countries about cabotage policies Next is the cabotage policy in Malaysia. The reason for the formation of cabotage is to govern the transportation of goods or passengers between two locations along the coastline routes of the same country by transport providers from other countries. It is important to lessen Malaysia's reliance on foreign ships by fostering greater engagement in the global maritime industry and along Malaysia's coast. Malaysia's Cabotage Act is aiming to reduce Malaysia's reliance on foreign ships and outflows of foreign currency in the form of payment for products. It was started in 1980 effective on 1 January 1980, when the Merchant Shipping Ordinance 1952 was changed, and the Inland Shipping Licensing Board was founded. Implementation and Enforcement of the Cabotage Law Policies against sabotage specifically defend indigenous maritime businesses by restricting access to overseas market. The term cabotage is defined as commerce, navigation, or the exclusive right of a nation to control the airspace over its territory. For some of these countries, it is implemented so strictly that no foreign-owned ships are allowed to operate in their domestic waters. Malaysia's maritime cabotage policy aims to reduce the dependence on foreign ships. Permission withdrawal for foreign ships to continue trade in ports resulted in fights between foreign and domestic merchants. 4.1 Price disparity between Pinishgila and East Malaysia Higher price for same items in East Malaysia compared to Pinishgila Foreign Argo ships unable to unload their cargo at the ports in West Malaysia Therefore, foreign cargo ship need to unload in the international port in West Malaysia Then, the cargo will be transported to East Malaysia by local cargo ships The policy actually want to prevent international ships from docking along the shore and increase the competitiveness among ships shipping industry. However, the shipping become more complicated, increase the shipping time and drives up goods prices. There is monopolizing of market domestic ships. Due the cabotage policy restrict international vessels come into Malaysia. Next regulations and policy control international maritime is to protect the domestic market. So international vessels need to register the license with requirement 30% local equity participation and ship owner must Malaysian and 75% of Malaysian staff. It will make the international vessels face the struggle. Consequences, without international vessels will make the domestic vessels become become monopoly and hard to control, to the decrease of foreign investment to Malaysia. Due to the cabotage policy restrict the foreign a chance to develop in Malaysia because of unfriendly benefits towards them. Besides that, foreign face the license issue make them feel less interesting to invest in Malaysia due to the policy unfriendly to them. Next is the competitor use their strategic treat the foreigner with tons of the benefits to attract foreigner invest to their country. So to Malaysia need to stable the politic and launch the friendly policy to attract foreign investor invest in Malaysia. 4.4 Coastal Shipping Safeguard of Maritime Transportation In a total of 20.279 tes of local sea containers were transported from Kuching to Port Glang. Foreign vessels only responsible for 12.4% among the containers. With 2,504 tes, Malaysian ships will engage in a huge competition and face a detrimental effects especially for smaller shipping companies, still have advantages of controlling competitives among foreign and local ships to avoid monopoly situation in shipping sector by single entity. Next is the shortage of seafarers. 
starting in 2017, the number of seafarers is becoming fewer and fewer. It is possible that over the next several years, Malaysia will be confronted with a severe lack of seafarers. These reasons may become the number of seafarers to become a less. The seafarers will change to other businesses to maintain their lives. Unexpected activities such as the pandemic and world war caused maritime activities to stop and the policy didn't make strong to protect their benefits such as issues fatigue, wages, and allowance. The excessive workload in the long term causes seafarers to have physical health problems. Working overtime to keep the efficient operation of the sea will cause the risk of accidents to increase. The Port of Klang designated as Malaysia's main container hub port, is an important gateway for all international cargo traffic. However, cabotage policies have significantly limited the scope and scale of efforts to address these issues. Cebu and Sarawak are given stronger rights than other states in Peninsula Malaysia under the MA63, although these have not been reflected. For example, the two states are responsible for producing around 60% of Malaysia's oil and gas, but they receive only 5% of the royalties. Councillor Indonesian Consulate General stated that Malaysia's coastal navigation policy hindered trade between Cebu and Indonesia. The Indonesian coastal regions of Dawao and Kalimantan are now conducted by wooden hull boats and tiny vessels that are not recognized by International Maritime Organization IMO, law. Under the Kubatai regulations, the International Maritime Organization restricts trade to steel hulled vessels. In 2021, the countries of China, South Korea, and Japan were at the top of the shipbuilding industry. They are more competitive than Malaysia. Shipyard Malaysia provides similarly but not high yield services and just they competitive in market Malaysia only. If local shipyards do not engage in larger, higher value new construction or repair projects and do not expand their reach internationally, they will be restricted to building low end ships and offshore structures. Whereas shipyards located in other regions may be able to construct these things more quickly and at a lower cost. The process of training new seafarers need to add on the traditional and new technology used in the maritime industry to ensure the seafarers can handle all system and the sake of management convenience. Considering the cost and efficiency, the frequency and quality of transport services, and the number of vessels available off the coast of Malaysia, it is also understandable that most charterers prefer international vessels as it are larger, more technologically advanced and more competitively priced. The lack of an edge also hinders their ability to provide superior technology and service to consumers, which has no positive impact on their ability to develop their international business, reputation and fame. Therefore, abolishing it can replace it with other assistance, such as research funding, arguments supporting and opposing the continuation of the sabotage policy. The government support policies to safeguard the sector, in particular, were insufficient and were still necessary. Local businesses faced a variety of obstacles, including competition from worldwide big players and decreased global trade volumes, domestic shipping sector anticipates that the government will pay particular attention to including adequate finance and tax breaks for ship owners in budget 2023. Other than that, sailing in spring, shipments increased at a slower 15.0%, the weakest rate in 15 months, as overseas demand weakened owing to continued cost constraints, and a recurrence of COVID cases in some countries. The downside. Malaysia which is heavily reliant on commerce to drive its economic growth, needs a robust marine industry to stem the outflow of cash caused by the enormous cost for overseas freight charges. The government imposed a number of anti-profiteering regulations to guarantee that domestic shippers did not charge unreasonable charges. If the policy is repealed, employment in the maritime sector and its downstream industries may suffer. Why opposing the continuity of the cabotage policy? The first reason is it increased the vessel turnaround by encouraging multinational shipping lines and national level feeder companies to compete with domestic cargo for countries with large coastlines. Cabotage policies require the shipper to employ feeder ships or flag state ships of the specific nation to convey their cargo. This could cause a halt in the transit of the goods, raising the overall cost.
cost of transportation and increasing inefficiency. The second is the rising logistical expenses of the prices was the reason of the rising price of imported goods. The buyers had to hire a third-party shipping company to transport their goods because the foreign suppliers were not able to send the goods to Sabre. As a result, domestic lines increased their prices as a result to meet the rising demand. The abolishment of cabotage does not bring a lower cost of living expenses. Cabotage policy restricts international liners from entering. Low profit for them due to the low volume of pickup by removing the policy. They are giving our business away to new arrivals. The prices are increasing as a result of the absence of foreign liners. As a result, prices for commodities and living expenses have increased in East Malaysia. The legality of cabotage paved the way for the unfair rivalry between transportation companies from several nations. Besides that, it creates unbalanced competition and the transport outsourcing. These cost disparities harm drivers within those operators and transport companies situated in nations with comparatively higher minimum wage standards since they force them to replace one truck driver with another who works the same route and for a lesser money. In summary, cabotage policy promotes national sovereignty, since Malaysia need a strong presence in the marine services market for economic and security reasons. Home enterprises can flourish and compete in domestic seas and, eventually, in international waters if they are protected from foreign competition. Next is about the lesson learned from other countries' cabotage policy. The strictly prohibits foreign ships and personnel from entering United States as an example. Under a strict maritime cabotage regime, the policy specifies that ships carrying the United States flag must carry out the transportation of all products traveling between ports in the United States. Merchant Shipping Act of 1920 Jones Act The remarking of the convenience flag under the international registration and resulted in a severe fall in the capabilities of the European fleet, leading to a net tonnage loss. In addition to this, the American Passenger Shipping Service Act of 1886 included a provision on cabotage as one of its provisions. No ship can do cabotage in U.S. territorial waters unless it meets the Act's requirements, which means it was built, owned, and registered in the U.S. Also, the Cabotage Act preserves U.S. industry and trade from foreign competition and eliminates unfair cabotage rivalry. The another cabotage policy is the liberalization of cabotage policy in the coastal of market shipping in New Zealand. Maritime cabotage liberalization. Strategy to strengthen competition to assure high quality, competitive shipping services that had a reliability coefficient and improved service frequency. And is also provided to improve agricultural, horticultural, and forestry products to remain competitive in the international export market. Hence, Liberalization allows international vessels to deliver or receive export products in New Zealand. The liberalization of the cabotage policy has liberalized the container shipping industry, particularly domestic container shipping between the North and South Islands. Thus, coastal shipping, rail, and road compete for domestic freight, and services between both islands' major ports have increased. Relaxes the cabotage policies of foreign carriers. First is China. Before that, maritime transportation in China's port must be operated by vessels flying the flag of China, with more than 50% capital contribution by the vessel owner form China. If violated, the operation will be suspended and fine regarding the legal income. In November 2021, China have taken measures to allow ships flying foreign flags to carry international voyages from foreign carriers between seaports in China. This has helped to reduce transportation time, emissions, and release available capacity for customers. Another country that relaxes the cabotage policies of foreign carriers is India. Before that, India used the Merchant Shipping Act of 1958. Only vessels flying the Indian flag can transport goods or passengers between ports in India. However, its restrictions have hampered maritime trade and driven up costs. In 2016, the government has allowed vessels of foreign carriers to be deployed between Indian ports with several conditions. This has provided India the capability of competing with similar nations in the global shipment sector, and the ability to draw cargo coming from or going to foreign ports. Next is the freedom in providing services in maritime transportation in Europe. Vessels flying the EU flag are allowed to engage in the coastal trade of any other EU nations. The European Commission strives to ensure free access and competition that is fair in the global shipping market. The free service provision measures adopted in cabotage policies of the EU have a positive impact on the competitiveness of the regulated fleet. 
maximize cabotage policy exemptions, Malaysia can develop its shipping industry for product delivery. The import and export of goods are assisted by foreign ships, which makes it possible for domestic shipping to remain competitive. Local ships get help from foreign ships if it's in an emergency. Malaysia can settle quickly and safely while ensuring that the shipping and cargo sectors remain active. While implementation of Blue Economy System saves the marine ecosystem, develops life well-being, achieves the SDGs, and fosters economic growth. Thanks for watching.